In which war did you serve? I served in the Korean War back in 1951 until September 1952. Okay. And what was your branch of service? My branch of service is after I uh, get the, the church, there was a staff sergeant. You were a staff sergeant in the United States Army, yeah? In the United States Army, yes. Yep, okay. And can you tell me from, from when you first enlisted and through where were the different places you were while you were in the Army? Where did you go to basic training and where, where did you go from there? I, uh, Just like the locations. Okay, but uh, I went to look for a, a job and I went into the business. I started a, a small business managing a small business in Monco, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And after one year, a few months, I was drafted into the United States Army. Uh, obligatory and um, from Unco, Puerto Rico, so I went to Fort Buchanan, uh, it's in the metropolitan area in the San Juan. Uh, from there, I kept the uh, registration and then they sent me to uh, Camp Tontuguero. Okay. Camp Tontuguero, okay. in, I think that was a uh, in um, nor central, north central of Puerto Rico, where I got my basic training. Okay. And I think the basic training was about four months, and after the four months, I was uh, processed to go to the to the Korean War. Okay. Was your basic training then? Was it all just Puerto Rican citizens, Puerto Ricans, or were there? People from the continental states there also. Or the training we took all the Puerto Rican. Only Puerto Rican. Okay. So we, I was assigned when I went to Korea. To Korea I was assigned to the 65th Infantry Regiment. To the 65th Infantry Regiment. Okay. And I was assigned to the Third Division, headquarters uh, headquarter of the Third Division, in a special unit. As a, as a ranger, oh. and when I was, since I was in the rangers, they asked me because I have the ability, uh, the ability to be a radio operator, mm -hmm. and then I serve a radio operator in that outfit of the special unit, um, the ranger, the rangers. Okay. So you were you were a, a radio operator. Radio with the ray, with rangers. Okay. Okay. Um. So you said you were drafted. You were not unless you you drafted. I was drafted. Yeah. Obligatory. I was drafted. Okay. okay. I didn't go out here. I was drafted. Okay. And um, do you recall the date when you got the draft notice? Do you remember? Did you was that a good thing for you or did you? Regret having, did you not like the idea of going in service or? At the time I was drafted. Yeah, what did you think of that? Well, I uh, was interested because I know that we need to serve the country when we were young. At that time I was about like 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that I have a business, but I decided that. I was trying to uh, do better and study uh, because I was planning to go to the college and then, uh, but I didn't know that I was going to be hired, I was going to be admitted. So when I went to the Henry Barrack uh, for Bukhanat, I mean, when I went to Fort mm -hmm. uh they gave me all the tests and everything, and, and, and right there they, 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 they hired me. So when I came back to Uncos, I came with the uniform already on. Military uniform, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So I was very interested because I know that uh, as a young fellow, we have a responsibility to serve uh, to the content. Um, and I had no problem into the basic training because always uh, in Puerto Rico where my parents was living was a hard places and everything and they were trying to look for a better um, uh, easy for the kids and everything so they did not what my parents my father moved from one town to the other because I born in Yauco and then from there I went to uh, Mount Nabo, Puerto Rico and then I start to do my living in, in Patilla, Puerto Rico. Okay. Okay. And from Patilla, I graduated in a project Puerto Rico. So from, uh, after I graduated, I took up my own, and then I went to Juncos, Puerto Rico, and I set up a business as a bartender, a manager, a, a bar in Ponce. This is my own year. This is before you enlisted. Before, before the army. Yeah. And then, uh, why I said that I had the training is because places that I went to, I had to hustle, I had to better myself and everything, and know how to uh, take care of myself and everything, so that many times I fight, I had to learn how to do some uh, kind of um, activities that I had to, like, you know, how to shoot, how to fight, how to, mm -hmm. without thinking of helping nobody. <laughs> yeah. So, so when I went into the army, I already have some training. I felt like it was not nothing for me. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um. So the basic training was. It was physically demanding, but it wasn't really hard for you. You did okay with the basic training. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so after boot camp, did you go to an AIT to a school to learn your job in the army, or no? Uh, when you go into the army, especially the volunteers, the Puerto Rican, you just go to do the work, hard work. Yeah, it was not opportunity to go and upgrade and take special training or so. Uh -huh. They didn't give us that opportunity. But they pretty much made you an infantry guy. Infantry even, guy. even learning English, because at that time when I was drafted, in Puerto Rico was not enforced for the people to learn the English. Yeah. Now everybody who uh, living in, born in Puerto Rico uh, at the age of three or four or five years, they speak English like anybody here. Oh, yeah. yeah. But before, even the teachers uh, teaching English, they even the teacher was not able mm -hmm. to establish a conversation in English. There was really a teaching by uh, books. Yeah. And so, so when I was all the Puerto Rican together, we was talking military. Uh, Commands in English and everything, but the conversation comes in Spanish, not on the conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> when, I, when I came back, I get back to work. There we go. Okay. I was talking about the, when I came back from the war. Yeah. I was. I came to Puerto Rico and I decided to um, I decided to get the church, mm -hmm. but they asked me they plead me to continue in the army because I was I have a lot of ability of leadership and they had to tell me that they need a person like me and everything. I said, listen, I am going to take the uh, GI Bill, a lot of story, English, and a lot of college, and everything, and a high school graduate. Uh, I don't prepare myself. Uh, I don't want to do anything more with the army. I just finished my time. Mm -hmm. 
I did good in Korea. That's it. I said, but you are seven years in reserve. I said, wait a minute. Seven years in reserve, give me eight, uh, six more years. Because if I get these six more years, after the six more years, I complete like eight years, and I don't have to be serving anymore. So for me to go and prepare myself, I go to college. Mm -hmm. But those six years put me out of control. Because they sent me from Ponce, Puerto Rico to for right cancers, and when I went there, I was like nobody. And I know that the, uh, the sergeant major asked me, I said, no problem. You don't speak no English, no problem. Come into my office. When I went to his office, he said, you are going to be, for the time left in the army, you're going to be peeling potato, no ranks, we're going to demote you, and no problem. But you stay the rest of the time peeling potato. No pain, nothing. Really? Because you didn't speak English? Yeah. They don't have no Hispanic there. You were the only one there? You didn't have any... No, no other people, no other people. You didn't have any buddies, any Puerto Rican friends that were there? Just you? Yes, me. What happened? I, I laughed at him. When I got over there, I went to PX and I buy a dictionary, English, Spanish, Spanish, English. And I bought uh, uh, books yeah. with pencils and everything. Since everybody was, because at that time I was young and I cut, I cut everything and everything, you know, I didn't have no problem. Uh, I can memorize, I have a good mind. And then I start to write in Spanish, translated English. Mm -hmm. I get the newspaper, English newspaper, mm -hmm. and those words that I know and uh, put together and everything. Since everybody was sleeping, I was learning. I mean, I didn't go to sleep. I have some water in my eyes and everything, and remember everything. In the morning at 5 o'clock, I put the light on. Everybody get up! <laughs> Five minutes before they put the light, I put the light on. Everybody, look at this cat, he's speaking English. <laughs> so you talk yourself. Yeah. Talk 15 yourself. minutes you were outside. And when you outside, everybody look at me and say, what? Uh, one guy look at me, he says, you know, why do you look at me? Ah, you know, okay. I'm going to give you five minutes. Five minutes was I did one about face and I got that uh, bed and I put him out of the bed because I was strong also. That doesn't mean work. Yeah. I was not playing. <laughs> this guy. So, <laughs> I learned English. Awesome. I never got to potatoes. No potatoes for no. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so later on, you know what they did? Later on, they sent me to overseas because I was not able to go overseas. I was Korea, came back to Puerto Rico, Ponce, Puerto Rico. They came and had to stay in overseas and they sent me overseas. Overseas to where? I asked, they asked me first, they sent me to Iceland. Iceland? Yeah. Yeah. And when they told me to Iceland, wow, I was so happy and everything. Simon, I salute him, a military salute, and then I hug him and everything. Nobody mm -hmm. there to be to Iceland. He sent me to Iceland. Wow, they were looking at me. He sent me over there to Iceland. You know why? <laughs> when did he get up? Oh, he wanted, he wanted to. I know that you know what I did. I said, I was smiling and everything. I said, Thank you. Nobody, I mean, they're uh, looking for somebody to send me to Iceland. you there to send me to Iceland. I speak English already. Yeah. You're there to send me to Iceland. Thank you. You changed the hands. What was in Iceland? Uh, in Iceland. What was there? I mean, what was there a post, an installation there that you they have? To? They have uh, an outpost. From the other side of the Siberia, watching 
international Russia. <laughs> oh, okay. And they have something over there that the houses was block of ice <laughs> covered with different inside pills, uh, pills of whales or so. Yeah. And people were over there, you know, just to cope. Yeah. I didn't like to go. Who do you think you get? Do you want to go? No. Oh, it was playing with me. I said, you know, my wife was in Puerto Rico. I said, get the plane. And she got the plane. And the next day, she was sent me, send me a telegram. And when they sent me a telegram, I got the telegram. I said, wow. I told the sergeant that sent me to Iceland. I said, can I take my wife? Hell no. He cannot take you cannot take your wife to Iceland. But she's coming in the plane. <laughs> they don't send me to Iceland. No. So you did not go to Iceland then? Huh? You did not go to Iceland? No, then? I didn't go to Iceland. Oh, you didn't? Oh, you because know. my wife came to my to, 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 to okay. Fort Riley, Kansas. Okay. So Fort Riley, Kansas, you went to Fort Riley after, you know, after Korea? After. After Korea, you were the Fort Riley. No, sir. When I came to Korea, they sent me to Puerto Rico. Camp Los Ponce, Puerto Rico. Right. And then you left Puerto Rico to go to yeah. Kansas. Uh, only two years in Puerto Rico, they sent me to Kansas. Fort Riley, Kansas. Okay. So, how long were you in Korea? Almost a year, but I was nine months in the field, in the front line. Nine months. Okay. Well, Because if you are in the front line, yeah. You stay nine months. If you are in a rifle company, you stay 12 months. If you are in artillery, you stay like it's 18, 18 months. Yeah. If you are in an office in the back, you stay two years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I was right in the front line. And what was your time? Do you remember, do you remember when you went there and when you left? The, the dates? I cannot say today it was a multitude or whatever. I cannot say it, but the multitude. That time from 50, 50, 51, 1950? Uh, they, 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 they was in the, when I came back, it was about 1972. September. Of 1972? 1972, I came back from Korea. Oh, okay, okay, I see. So, you were not in Korea during the Korean War? I was in a friend line in Korea, fighting with the people. Oh, you were? Yeah! I was, uh, do you see that they were not we were? The 65th well, Patrick Regiment, we went to the war. Yeah. And uh, we have the 15 in one side, we have a 7 in the other side and everything. Some uh, uh, Anglo American uh, unit mm -hmm. regiment. Yeah. We were right in the middle. Sometimes in, when you say. They, they said, it was withdrawn because uh, they was losing some casualty, yeah. and they called us to call at them. Okay. So when you say us and we, was did you go with a, a Puerto Rican unit, a whole unit? The whole Korea? unit, all the city people. All Puerto Rican. It was all Puerto Rican people. The they have a section. Okay. okay. And what, which one? Almost like a four thousand, four thousand soldiers, right there. Six. That was the sixth infantry. 65th Infantry Regiment. Okay. okay. And so you were on the front lines the whole. In the front line, all the whole. Time. You probably experienced quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. You want to talk about any of your experiences while you were there? You want to talk about any of your experiences while you were there? Some of the things that you experienced while you were in Korea? My experience in Korea. Yeah, some of the things you've seen or, or you know, that you remember? Yeah, I remember. Um, I, uh, we went from the hill, I remember one of the hill, we stayed there, uh, the uh, uh, artillery and the airplanes throwing some napalms, uh, bombs and everything. Mm -hmm. And we was watching, watching, and then after that, uh, 48 hours, they sent us to go and find out and cover the place. We, we climbed 
those mountains, we stay inside the mountain taking care of until a battalion or, or red or headquarters or the battalion come and get the position. But we went first. Mm -hmm. One of the missions that we have mm -hmm. as a ranger is that all the battalions is over here. Yeah. That's right. And they said, well, we're going to take that mountain. But we take the special force after 9 o'clock, we went to make certain recognition in that area. If the enemy bar identified booby traps, uh, anti tanks, personnel, anti personnel bombs, mm -hmm. and so on yeah. and everything. And they teach us, they teach us how to activate or inactivate those bombs and everything. Mm -hmm. Minus, mm. so so that we went and we came in the morning to report. So mm. we went first before they go, mm. and we came report to report where they can go, where the tanks yeah, can go, what enemy is in the front, what the uh, fortification, where they have the shotguns, the artillery, and so on. From the front. That was one of the. Um, I was a radio operator. Yeah. That's a uh, that's a very dangerous job. That was a dangerous. Did you? Uh, I like it. You like? Did you lose? Did you lose a lot of no, people? I like it. Why? I like it because uh, every soldier they have the cargo pack. Yeah. Still have. All that close in the winter, all that close. How are you gonna fight with that and everything? You know? So we was like a cowboy <laughs> <laughs> with a hat like this, and then the, the clothes with the hands, with the paint, the faces, and the hands, and everything. We have a 45 caliber pistol with a knife, with a rope, nylon rope, with a mission. So you didn't have to. We can run, we can do this, we can do that. You didn't wear all that bulky equipment that most of the soldiers were wearing. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. So, imagine when I went there and I have all of the things. I have three grenades. I have my rifle, M1. Yeah. Uh, all the cargo pack, which is still never. It's about seven or eight, ten pounds and mm -hmm. everything. All that Britain will run it. Oh, well. I'm going to fight like that. Yeah. Even if it's winter or summer, you have to carry all those things. But as a ranger, you have just a uniform tied up in your head with a oh, steel hammer, just have a cup like that. You paint your face, the hands, gloves, and everything, 45 caliber pistol. A knife, but a rope. If you got somebody, you have to take out the end and everything jump from one plate to the other, and everything so it was easier. So that's that why I felt it was good. So, uh, danger everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a dangerous job having to go ahead of everybody and find all those obstacles. One of the things that I was okay. Some of my fellow, not everybody survived. Some of my fellow next to me was shot here. Even in a cover, let's go and uh, take your position, break it. The other, one leg. And I felt like this. That bullet come over here. <laughs> you know why I learned? I learned that my parents, they have faith and they go to the church all the time and everything, and they was praying for me. And they was praying for me, they was helping me that the Holy Spirit was saving me and everything. In every endeavor that I get into those cages, because I, I just came and I said, how am I going to be alive? When I was right in the front of the enemy's shooting, 
and I shoot 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 and and I shoot and I and I shoot and I shoot and was this unit, were these the Barikaneers or? All Barikaneers. All Barikaneers. All Barikaneers. Can you tell me where does that come from? That What does that mean? Where does it come from? The, uh, when Puerto Rico was discovered in the second voyage of Columbus, mm -hmm. he named the island San Juan. Right. And they put the capital, Puerto Rico. Okay. They have, uh, they find some Indians, Tainos, and those Indian Tainos in the New World, they was advanced in many things. Mm -hmm. They have the language, they have the uh, education, some kind of way that they, they believe. Uh, in, in the, in the in God and so on, mm -hmm. and they have kings, I mean, chief, they have chief government, and they have a, a, a lady that they call it Boring, uh, Borinke. She was named Borinkin by the governor of the chief of Puerto Rico, Borinkin, that you would look her like a king, a queen, like a queen, Borinkin. And her name is Borinkin from Puerto Rico, so they, we call it Borinquinias, Borinkin. They call it Borinkin. Instead of saying Puerto Rican, you can say Borinquinias. The word comes from that word of Borinkin. Okay. Okay. So were all all Puerto Rican soldiers considered Barricaneers or Yeah. Okay. okay. Since it was together in the same regiment, sixty five infantry regiment. Okay. Everyone in Puerto Rico in the in the army was in the sixty fifth regiment or infantry. Uh, no in uh, the time of the war in Korea because some people that was drafted and sent it to jail. Or they were drafted and sent to South Carolina for a training. Or they were drafted and were sent to uh, 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 Panama and so on. Mm -hmm. the, those who served in another place, they were not in the outfit of the Boring okay. The Boring Kenya was all Puerto Rican, they comprised a uh, regiment, 65th Infantry Regiment, all Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. And that's what they call it, all Puerto Rican Boring Kenyans. Um, were you, were some, you pe some people they went drafted into the United Army, they sent it to Germany. Yeah. All of they sent it to places and everything, you know, several. They uh, was not born in Chinese, but they were Puerto Now, after the war in Puerto Rico, in, in Korea, after the war, mm -hmm. when the war was over, they sent those people back because they start to register in the army and so on. Long activity. So they went, they, they sent it overseas to Korea, but in, I think, the, after the 1953, 55, 54, they sent Korea, but they had, I don't think that they are going to Korea because there was not of the 65th Infantry mm -hmm. Regiment, which we presented together mm -hmm. the initiative. Uh, we um, presented the initiative that we can fight as a Puerto Rican. For, the, for this country and do a good job and that way. Oh. Oh. Um, you were in Korea, you were never a prisoner of war? Were you POW? No? No, I was not a POW. Okay. Uh, were you, during that, during that time on the front line, did you ever get wounded? Yeah. There was a time that one company, they have a, a platoon, and they was cut in the enemy line. Uh, there was a, a, a slope 
a mountain, and it was behind that mountain. Um, the 6th Defense Regiment, the battalion, the battalion was in another hill. Mm -hmm. So we, they received information that that, that, that company, that uh, platoon, that platoon uh, was hit very bad inside the enemy line and so they had to go out and, uh, and rescue them. You know what they did? They called the special unit, the Rangers. So we went to the site of the, of the line or the hill and we started to crawl, crawling, like crawling. No problem. One by one, every minute, so that they can see us. We want to wear. We get into those places and everything, we see people with one leg cut, with one dead, other dead and everything. So our commander told us, we have to run. You go one by one, you go every two minutes. One by one, you run all the way down, but you lay down, lay down, and then crawl, and then you know how the training that we receive from everything. Mm -hmm. I wake you in that mountain, you know the mountain. I was the first one that I run because I have the radio, the radio. I have a heavy stuff with me. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that in a valley, they still have, it was in the winter, they still have ice. Mm -hmm. And then when I run, I jump on everything and I crawl, and I went to the uh, high from there, and I walk, and I run again, and I jump and jump, and try to get into the mountain. My radio was not working, I cannot run much. And then what I did, I took that radio and I cleaned it up. And I clean up space and I hide it and I continue running. Without the radio. With the radio. <laughs> when I went to the mountain, I saw a person, I saw I have my caliber, and because I have a radio, I have a, a caliber um, gun. M1? And no, no, I have the, the, uh, uh, the small one, the small one. The Ca uh, carabine. Oh, carabine. Yeah. 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 So, I thought that there was an enemy, and then there was my commander. Oh. <laughs> I said, you know, where did they do that? I'm going to go and help you, know, but the radio is in the enemy line, you know. Go and get the secretaries, go together. And he looked at me, he says, wait a minute. Again, because the, they were throwing artillery. Mm -hmm. And he said, and I went over there, he grabbed my my chingon, I said, my uh, carbon, I said, go on, I keep. <laughs> I said, okay, you have to do it. I went crawling, 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 and I see the enemy crawling, crawling, crawling. I grabbed that radio and I brought it back, he wasn't there. It took me hours to get into the enemy, to the, my friends. Mm. He wasn't there, but I get the radio. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All those things that we have. <laughs> I get some people was wounded. I had those people who was wounded and I see blood. On you? Yeah. Don't because you? About, I, I didn't pull attention because I was touching people who was wounded and happened. Mm -hmm. But a few hours later I feel something happened to me and I get this over here, one of the bullet, one of the fragment of those artillery well, he went like this and hit my my, my head. And I find it was like this, it was just a little piece of fragment yeah. inside. That's the only thing that I get. Well, you know what they told me? You're going to have a proper heart in Galicia. They don't give you a proper heart. You don't, well, I, I thought it was going to give me a proper heart. But when I come over here, then I start to ask and everything. They don't put it in paper, so they don't put it in paper. I don't have it. So you didn't get a, you didn't get any type of recognition. No, I don't put it in the paper. No. In the paper. Wow. But I was on it. <laughs> was not life uh, treated. Was not life. Uh, not life.
life-threatening. But they're bad, you know, but it was, I was wounded. Yeah, yeah. That's... So you see the English that I'm talking because I learned by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's good English. And when I learned the language, English language, so they sent me the overseas, and I asked them, they asked me where I would like to go overseas, and I said, I'm to Japan because I know that I like Japan. Japan? Yeah. When I went to Japan, they said, we don't have no infantry with you, they sent me back to Korea. And I, they assigned me to the first uh, infantry cavalry division. First half? Cavalry division. And in three months that I was over there, they, they, from there they sent me to, because I, I asked for transfer, and they sent me to Oklahoma. For itself? But in those three months that I was in Korea, I decided that I start signing with no Hispanic, English speaking people. Yeah. yeah. So you made, you made staff sergeant? I don't make sign in a war. The only thing is that if the sergeant was not doing the job that I was in, he'd like a uh, talent. You know, if you are in a profession, you don't want the other person in command tell you. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did you did you what awards or medals did you receive while you were in the service? Medals or awards did you receive oh, yeah. while you were in the service? Uh, the medals. Uh, I see you had the CBI. Yeah. CIB combat infantry badge. I, 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 I lost my hearing. Yeah. Hearing. Um. I have the two fourteen. I have. I have the two fourteen. You have the D two fourteen. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. Good combat medal. The combat infantry badge. And I have. Okay. Um, president. Whatever. Okay. Okay, we'll but, but I think that you have it. Yeah. So, how did you stay in touch with your family while you're in while you're in the service? How did you stay in touch with your family while you're in the service? How did you communicate? Just through mail, or, or did you have much communication with your family? No, at a time. No. Not for me. No, no uh, communication from Korea. No, but your your wife went with you to. No, I was I was to Japan or. I, I was single at that time. I got married when I released for six more years. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Okay. Um. Did you see any uh, USO shows or anything while you were in Korea? While you're overseas, USO shows. Uh, you, you familiar with the USO? USO. Yeah, it's like uh, oh, during World War Two, it was like Bob Hope would go to. No, I don't receive anything. They're not World War Two. Uh -huh. Vietnam, actually. No, they didn't. Okay. Um, did you go on on leave anywhere in particular? Vacation, take a, a leave, time, time off? When I was in the front line, yeah. after seven months, six or seven months, they took us, a few of us, not all, so and so and so, go with me. And then we run under the field, and we go walking, walking, walking in the field until we find it was a, a, a truck camouflage and everything and drove all the way down to a resting area. And from there they put us in another truck and with the, they have a, a plane. They put us in a plane. And when we was in a plane, they said that you're gonna go on partition. <laughs> we didn't know where we were. No. We go partition. So they took us to some place in Japan. I think I went to Kokura, Japan. We was 
all there is, with all the um, no help God and everything we need, yeah. safe and we was offered. So from the plane they have uh, like a tunnel to go into the building. We go into the building and uh, what they did, they give us a duffel bag to put all that clothes, take the clothes out. And they have a little bag to put all those, say, uh, if you have some identification papers and everything in that bag, but they all the clothes and boots and everything put it into that duffel bag and hand it into one window. So they got the towels and soap and everything, went to the showers, we take a shower and everything, and then from there they start to give you towels, uh, something for, for shave, and go straight ahead. You save, mm -hmm. you, you take your clothes, you know, dry up and everything. And then in another window they give you clothes, put the shirt, put the pants to this. If the shirt was not fit, put it in another window, put the name in, and do it anyway, take it from the other window or tie up. <laughs> the same thing. You know what I did? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. But, I, but I, I took all that clothes and everything, I was the hurry and everything that I jump into one door and when I went over there there was an open building there with him with a lot of ladies among the children and I had nothing to talk. <laughs> they opened that door and threw me back <laughs> because that pants is not fitting. <laughs> kind of surprised them, huh? <laughs> After we was everything that they saved us, cut in the heaven, like you, and they said, okay, you have one week vacation, you go to this place, you can go to this place, you go to this place, this place, this place, and we went one week out. Mm -hmm. Come back, you have to come back. And when we come back, close, change the clothes, go back to fight again. That was the vacation that I had. <laughs> Did everybody come back? Uh, Did everybody come back? Did some people not come back? No, no, no everybody came back. Everybody came back, yeah. But they, they, they take one group first and then the other group and then the other yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. <laughs> yeah, that was some of the pictures that I have. They had one picture. Matter, oh, of fact, yeah. matter of fact, they put something in the left side or they supposed to be in the right side. They were sewing and everything, put that clothing, and then had it in different places. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put them on backwards, put them on wrong. Yeah. Um, were there any jokers or some, were, were some pranks or others? People pull pranks on each other. What did you guys do? You know, when you're in the front line, it's got to be pretty, pretty tense. Did you guys do anything to try and relax or to try and you know, um, make life a little easier? Uh, I think at one time they have us uh, going into an area. They have some wax ladies talking and bringing coffee and donuts and everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Just one day, if you remember. Okay. Um, so you were, you were in, how many years were you in the service? Were you in the army? Um, it's like eight years, nine years and eight, eight years without three months, okay. left three months. I think I, because when I came back, they processed me to the other six years that I released mm -hmm. so soon and then I lost those three months, mm -hmm. completely ages. Okay. Okay. Um, so, where were you at when your service ended? Where did you end? Your... I was in a Fort Seal, Oklahoma. Fort Seal. Okay. And when I was in a Fort Seal, Oklahoma, 
they make me a lot of propaganda to paint and everything. I said, listen, I'm going to go this time, I'm going to go out, I'm going to get in the church and everything. Because I was not treated equally. Mm -hmm. you know, always they have something. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I decided, I got in the church at about 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and I was married and had two kids. I don't stay in Oklahoma mm -hmm. because it's no job over there. And I said, well, I'm going to go to New Haven, Connecticut because I read information for them. They have the M1 that we use it, they have a Winchester in New Haven. They make the, Winchester, the M1 in Winchester company oh. in New Haven. Yeah. The helicopter that we traveled and never seen in a war in Korea, they make it in Bridgeport, Sikorsky. Mm -hmm. The airplane that we ride, they have it in the and <laughs> mm -hmm. the submarine that we see the submarine they make it in New London it's a very yeah. job over there so I went the helicopters I came to Connecticut I applied and all those things they was not hiring for tourism they don't give me a job no place we experience and experience in the ammunition and everything they don't hire me where did, did you finally get hired somewhere? Where did you get hired finally? Where did you go they to school? Might, they might hire me. They sent me to pick up tomatoes. They said, I don't have no experience with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then, if I accept anything, like picking tomatoes, vegetables in the farm, or going to one dishes, I was not going to do those things. I make my own, I make my own living. I was, I, when I, I look for a job, I was looking for my own. No money, no opportunity, but I manage. I start to organize and I start to make organizations, and organizing the people in the community. Mm -hmm. I become an activist. <laughs> For four years, I was a second director, uh, a secretary director of one of the uh, service agency in the community. They don't give me that job. I developed it. Okay. After I developed it, I uh, work so that I was a director of the agency. Mm -hmm. So you created you created a I job can, for you. I and I have other people to do their own and everything. And you worked, how long did you work doing that? How long were you in that job? In that job, it's about, what's that, 30, 35, 35 years, 35 years. Okay, um, so you didn't go to school at all after you didn't use the GI Bill? I went, when I, after the church, I came to heaven. I want to go to the college. The first university that I decided was New Heaven University. It's in Arlington, West Ham, mm -hmm. in the group, the uh, Road. I dressed up and everything. I got my um, papers in the hands. I went to the college. And they look at me, I said, may yeah, I have yours, it's all right. I came over here to apply for the GI Bill, um, high school graduate, I have all these papers, and I just came to the army. I'm a veteran. This is not for you. That would be answered for three times. This is not for you. Not for me. Wow. If I jail, if I do things, if I strike, they might call the police and they uh, might have pressure because the police at the time when they see Puerto Rican, they hear him right away. Mm. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. Mm. I got that spirit. Mm. No, the people they have the spirit, but I have. Yeah. Because I, I always was looking for opportunity. 
questions of thy nine questions, why? And then I cannot ask questions because then the real defaults. Now, um, only thing that I happen to me is an experience. I'm glad, I'm glad at, the, at the beginning, at that time, the veteran association. The army, the, the, the veteran organizations and everything, then they have no um, mandate or law for benefit from veterans like that. Mm -hmm. Some people they have benefit and they have even welfare for the people in the COVID. That nothing. Um, now Glad, proud that because of the new initiative of the Congress, senators, presidents, so on, and everything, they are looking to help because by helping the veterans, help the nuns of the um, uh, the, 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 the society mm -hmm. for the country. And now it's a lot of opportunity. Yeah. And before there was no opportunity. So I lost the GI Bill. I lost the. Um, um, when, when you was in the army, you had the, um, the insurance, health insurance. Yeah. How they erase it without telling me? They erase it, the health insurance. I could have had the erase the health insurance. So they erase it. They didn't tell you. <laughs> no. They didn't tell me. They erased it. I don't have it. I couldn't keep it. I couldn't pay it. Mm -hmm. See? There's no opportunity there. Wow. Mm. Um, do you keep any, in contact with anybody you served with? Do you still have any friends that you served with that you talked to? You mean looking for a benefit? N no. People that were in the army with you, maybe friends that you made, do you still communicate with anyone? Do you still talk with anybody? I try because if I go from one place to the other, one section and everything, I cannot find it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I try to get uh, my uh, commander. I can find it. I find where I am now because I have a computer before there was no computer. Yeah. I find it in a town, I see the house and everything. so. He might die because whoever is there is some relative. Yeah. I mean, 85, I mean, 84 years, almost 85. But those people who were older than me at that time, they were amazing. Trying to get all the sergeants and everything. I, I, I go to Ponce, Puerto Rico to find out a sergeant man one. I uh, try to get a sergeant Algisoni from Agarguera. I try to get the model from the uh, Rio Piedras and none of them, no people they told me, they don't know them. Maybe they're dead. Um, how do you think your military experience influenced your life? Do you think it was a positive thing and, and helped you in your future life, in your later life, or? Your military experience, the, the, going in the military, was that a good thing for your future, or no? I learned a lot of things for my own. That every patient that I went to, everything that um, had to happen in order for you to to advance some help of mm -hmm. comprehension. <laughs> um, I don't keep no represalians, I don't keep no uh, I, I don't I don't keep no nothing against that happened mm -hmm. and everything, but I think of this experience that I need mm -hmm. for me to rethink to make my life and to have all to continue. 
Uh, are you in any veterans organizations, organizations like the VFW or, or American Legion or? I used to. I used to join uh, veteran of the foreign war. Mm -hmm. I was a member of the veteran of the foreign war. Uh, there was a, a place over there in, the, in New Haven, in the corner of Washington and Howard. But uh, there was a. A redevelopment agency that they got all that area they rehabilitated and they sold that building and that building was out. Oh, really? And after that, I joined none of them. But now um, I, um, I joined the Habot Hispanic uh, Veteran Association of Connecticut. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add that we haven't discussed? Anything you'd like to talk? Uh, I don't know about what is going to be this uh, interview because I'm not expressing myself <laughs> correctly. <laughs> but, uh, uh, what will be all of it? We we won't. We generally don't edit the tapes, so the, the whole thing will be available. Okay. Um, one of the experiences that something good that happened to me is that I kept myself active since I was in heaven up to now. I feel like I'm in combat. Oh, yeah? I feel like I'm in combat. That would use me active in every organization, everything that happened in my community, in the city, in the state, in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, to see how I can contribute to something that uh, should be beneficial to the society and um, mm. since I was denying opportunities and work, I felt that I had the potential ability to do things because if they don't give me a job, how I'm going to be like a professional person, all mm -hmm. in meetings and so on, and everything, in a position of command. Those people, there was a director, so the secretary director, I was there. Why? But what is this guy doing? I was a secretary director too. Doesn't matter what I said, but I was a secretary director. <laughs> yeah. um, for leaving, Sustain my kids and everything. All of them, they are profession. They have their own positions and everything. Profession. I still decide because I don't have a job. They have to give me a job. Yeah. I find a job. I uh, went. I, I, I got a, a job um, in this way. The organization. They don't have no funds for the organization, so right after 35 years, no funds. Don't worry, they have everything from the state. They made the office over there, I prefer it. I bought a truck and I went to the free markets. I went up, I rented a, a trailer over there and I did that 14 ton truck and went to New York in a wholesale buying stuff for the beginning. And selling and everything was making money, mm -hmm. paying my bills, okay? supporting my kids' college. Okay? One day I was advised by the police, Are you driving that truck with a license? I said, Well, I told him, It's one truck, one man, and one small business. Who is going to drive? Oh, you can drive it. 
but you are 63 years old. 63 years old, you have to accompany the license to pay the drug, accompany the license with the doctor's certificate. It's okay? Yeah, you say, I, I look old. <laughs> I look tired. I'm the doctor, okay? I went to the, doctor, to, to the hospital, the uh, Western Veteran Hospital. I asked for examination. In order for them to give me a certificate to put it in license, they put me in a stress machine. And they said that the stress machine, they said, why? You, the, the machine said that you don't die in five minutes. He said that you're going to die in five minutes. Yeah. And you know what I did? You have a person over here that he is not a, a, eat a good food and everything. It's, 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 it's nutrition, it's not. And then the person, he says you're going to die in one week, he died the same day. <laughs> they tell me, the machine said that you're going to die in five minutes. Say, wait a minute, you give him two years for one, and one year, six months for the other. He can find me, what am I going to do in five years? I don't have no time to tell the cats, you know, <coughs> forgive my both things. Hmm. You know what I did? I jumped in the floor, do pork chop, and everything. The doctors got nuts and everything. He called everybody, and they tied him in a chair, tied up. And he goes, when I, when I jail, I said, why do you do that? He said, he does that, put medicine in my tongue. Find me. In 20, in 30 days after I was operated. Mm. <laughs> so, what I did, I made back drops and everything, I went to college. You know why I went to college? Because I don't have to pay for the college. And because I felt that I was losing my my yeah. I don't want to be a vegetarian, I'm gonna be active, I'm gonna be decent and everything. So I went to college to try I write notes and I write poems and I sing and I carry it up top and top and then I revise you know mm -hmm. my mind and coding. <laughs> In the college, since I was coding and doing good, I cannot hear that I have to work time for this. You know how? They offer me one per time, two days a day, two, 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 two hours a day, ten dollars an hour. They find out that I have a lot of experience doing this and everything. Wow! They could be coordinator. I spent fifteen years coordinator part time, five hours. I was making seventeen dollars and fifty cents an hour. It's not that the job they gave me in the street of the city, it's something agentionating that is connected with the family one. Mm -hmm. I, uh, last year, in January, I was living in a house, uh, elderly apartment, and I was paying because I was receiving part of the social security, and part of my work, I get $1,000. Right? I said, whatever, well, there's a mortgage and I bought a house. Mm. Yeah. A year ago. I was yes. 84 years old. Okay? <laughs> so, I continue striving and striving and striving in order for me to keep, keep myself alive. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> well, I, don't know how, I don't know how I look into that. That's it's okay. We'll we'll work. But I want to uh, I want to thank you for your service, and I want to thank you for the taking the time to let us in, let us interview you. I appreciate it. All right. So.